Why do you want to colonize Mars? I, th I think there's two reasons. Um, one is kind of a defensive reason that, like, if something bad were to happen to Earth, uh, then, um, you know, it could be like a meteor, or like whatever destroyed the dinosaurs, super volcanoes, uh, could be World War Three. Like, we could just, like, nuke each other to death yeah. or something. Like, I don't know, World War Three is, like, seeming a little more probable these days. Mm -hmm. um, that might be the leading factor. It might be the leading factor. So, um, you know, so, so there could be either some uh, natural disaster or some or something where humanity just like suicides itself with a, with a World War Three situation, and and then it would be, you know, good to have a second planet where so, so that like you know civilization isn't wiped out. So that's the kind of the def defensive reason. It's like life insurance for life collectively, and so you know not just for humans but all all, all like the creatures that we love. So, well, long term we could make it look like Earth. Uh, we have to warm it up, but there's a lot of um, there's a lot of ice on Mars. It's like cold, mm -hmm. so like you just have to warm it up to have liquid water. Um, but Mars has a, Mars would have um, an, an an ocean of I think about a roughly maybe a mile deep uh, on forty percent of the planet, roughly. Wow! Wow! Um, yeah. So if you just warm it up, so that's all ice. Water. All ice right now. Just ice. Forty percent of the planet. That shit is crazy. Just ice. In fact, a lot of the ice that you see on Mars like at the poles is actually uh, dry ice. It's uh, CO2, frozen CO2. Well, you could use like solar reflectors or you could just create artificial suns with uh, a, a series of uh, like thermonuclear explosions. Um, like this, the sun is like a, 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 a giant. You'd create a sun? Thermonuclear reactor. It's it's a like if you want to if, if you're worried about like well will that generate like dangerous radiation we'll have you stood in front of the sun if you you know just go out in the sun sure the mm -hmm. sun is uh it's, it's a giant thermonuclear reactor I think the first thing you gotta do is is build a a base and then then uh, that base would have like the like essentials of like food production uh, water like which is you know like have ice mining droids. They were like go mine ice and then melt it and purify the water, um, and then you need a propellant, uh, kind of a propellant factory or propellant plant. So Mars's atmosphere is primarily CO2, um, and if you and then if you take water, which is H2O, uh, and uh, you, you can uh, turn CO2 and H2O into CH4 and O2, which is methane and, and, and oxygen. So you, that that's why Starship uses methane as a fuel. It's 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 mostly oxygen. So it's like seventy eight percent oxygen, the propellant, and twenty two percent fuel. So in you know in space there's, in a vacuum you have there's no oxygen to burn. So you you've got to bring your own oxygen, and you mostly bring oxygen. So uh, you, you'd be uh, you need a propellant plant to create the liquid oxygen, liquid methane, um, and food and water and the basics essentially that would, that's that would be the, the thing to start off with um and um you'd be living in kind of like glass domes and partially underground and stuff so it would be hard living in the beginning on mars like not like a luxury situation but i would say the you know any for the for the first people that go to mars it, it's like it's gonna be like dangerous like you might die uh food probably not good um, you know, it's going to be a long and difficult trip. It's it's like probably like a lot of pain and danger. That's that. What, are, what yeah. do you think about but population? On the other hand, it's going to be a glorious adventure. Like not not like a <laughs> it's not like a luxury resort. It's going to be dangerous and difficult and, and, and a lot of lot of work basically. But you know, over time, you can make it awesome. A critical threshold is how many people how many people are needed on Mars for Mars to be self sustaining such that if the spaceships from Earth ever stopped coming, the people, the, it wouldn't die out, you know? So you gotta think about it, there's like, if we, we live on Earth here, but we live at the top of like a vast pyramid of industry, you know, where there's all these like mining of all these like elements, and then there's many, many steps of refining, and then and these are gradually turned into a product. Uh, but there's a massive base of industry that would need to be recreated on Mars. And if you're missing any, any element of that, then, um, it, then if the shifts from Earth stopped coming, it would die out. 
It'd be like if you had everything except vitamin C, um, then yeah, you'll be okay for a while, but then you're gonna eventually yeah, you're die. Gonna eventually you know. Die, yeah. So you got to You got to. There just can't be any any like missing, critical missing ingredient. So then it's like, okay, well, how many people are needed to ensure there's no missing ingredient? I don't know, maybe a million people. I'm guessing. Um, I hope it's not more than that. Um, it's probably not much less than that. And then you probably need millions of tons of cargo delivered to Mars. So it's a lot. Um, I feel like. But, you- but, but you can say like, like there's there's this thing called like the the great filters, or which is um, you know sort of coming from the Fermi paradox. Fermi paradox is is just where are the aliens? If the if the if the universe is really 13.8 billion years old shouldn't there be aliens everywhere um and if not why not um i think it was carl sagan who said that uh that there appear to be either like if there's there's either a lot of aliens or no aliens and that and and either either one is equally terrifying 